Hey guys, welcome back to Bone Shaker. Today I work on the right side of the main street, which is going to be pretty similar to the left side. The general idea is that it's kind of this symmetrical-ish street, so as you approach from the entrance being the big iron gate, uh, you kind of just have this street on with buildings on both sides, and right in the middle of that have the station in the distance as a sort of uh, a Disney castle would be in the main street in Disneyland, that kind of idea. So I wanted to make sure that both sides are more or less just about the same in measurements and have the same style to make the area just feel a bit more coherent and actually make it this nice transition into the area. Um, but I did want to have some, you know, unique qualities to all of these buildings. So they're going to be pretty different in how the details are laid out or how they're made, but they're going to share the same heights and, um, you know, the general sort of characteristics. So for this building, for instance, I want to go for the similar thing as the building on the other side and have the arches on the first floor and some simple windows on the second floor. Um, I have some of these pillars, but then again I'm using different pillars and I'll be using different ways to make the arches. It's that kind of thing. And something else which I haven't really talked about in the last video, but I only got one comment about which I was kind of surprised by is the fact that I made these pieces out of uh, one and a half tile parts and basically copy those over as separate buildings to be able to connect them Which can be kind of a hassle sometimes, but I wanted to not make these within separate buildings just to be able to Be a bit more flexible with that and especially in this case I needed to get different rotations of the same piece within the same building um, so while in the end it's going to look like one building, it isn't really going to be one particular building since the different parts of the building are made up of different buildings technically. And one of the reasons why I also wanted to do that is that I could make these pieces of the building one and a half tiles wide because I feel that's a little bit of a, be a better measurement in this case. Since the in-game grid seems to act well, almost precisely as the grid in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, apart from the fact that it can be moved, in that it's a 4x4 four four meter wide grid, and the standard walls are also 4 meters high, and that's sort of the very standard measurement uh, that all the windows conform to if you conform them to uh, the walls, and the sort of standard measurement that you often get between windows, and it's something that I didn't really want to go for, like I generally try to avoid it a little bit, and it, especially in this case I felt it would be better to use two windows on one and a half tile square um, buildings because the thing is if you have like a four meter wide wall and uh, you just place one window per each four meters that's just a little bit too sparse I feel uh, like there's a lot of room left between the different windows um, but on the other hand if you place two windows within one four meter wide wall section then it's kind of really crammed and you don't really have any space left in it anymore. So I just figured it would be best to divide this into two windows per one and a half tile square part. And just to make things a bit easier, uh, divide all those one and a half tile parts into separate buildings, uh, which also allowed me to really go into details with these parts and just be able to copy that over later to prevent having to spend many different hours on just trying to get all these details over the entire buildings. Alright, uh, though I do have to say a pretty major section of this time lapse uh, which consisted of well over an hour of gameplay turned out to be just me working on the dome which is kind of stupid in hindsight and I kind of regret that, that's one hour closer to death just for building a stupid dome in this game which I am just about to get to actually. Um, but it's kind of alright, I've got plenty of things that I also want to talk about um, after I just kind of finish that discussion about the one and a half tile part because one of the issues that I had with that that I completely forgot in the last video is that I still had that door on the bottom floor and while it works all right to divide the building into different sections when it comes to the windows because they're all pretty much repetitions of the same theme throughout the entire building um, I ended up having five different doors on the last building which is not so great so I'll avoid that for this building and in future purposes as well and I kind of want to get back to that building and get rid of the ridiculous amount of doors, but that's really just one of the rare downsides. Now when it comes to this dome, I also have to quickly say I wanted to copy this over like I usually do it. Like the best approach to doing this is to just make one section of the dome, uh, have it be on grid so you can actually copy it. And just make like one quarter of the dome and then select that either by dragging with the 
um, left mouse button or clicking the left mouse, mouse button on the pieces while holding control. That should answer quite a couple of questions that I got. Um, and yeah, that's just a really efficient way to do it. But in this case, this dome is just completely off grid. You can actually see me uh, trying to copy one thing over at some point in this time lapse, which just already happened. But it didn't really work since it's so ridiculously off grid. So I had to make the entire dome myself, which turned out to be more time consuming than I figured beforehand, and also more time consuming than I had hoped. Uh, but this is probably a good opportunity to talk about the video for E3 of Planet Coaster, even though this is a very topical at the moment, but it's probably not going to be relevant anymore if you watch this video back in the future. So I'm um, sorry about that, but I kind of just want to quickly mention it because I've gotten some amazing comments after E3 and I haven't been able to really reply to all of them personally, so I just want to take this opportunity to thank everybody for all the comments. Um, so yeah, there we go, thank you for all the comments. But I also want to talk about something a bit more serious, because there are also many comments about the fact that it's, uh, that there's like a lot of stuff from me in the video, and not so much from the rest of the community, which, and I don't want to start down talking the video and down talking my own stuff here, but I kind of do again because it does seem kind of strange to have a community creations video which is just so much of my stuff which I also worked for of course and I have to say I nearly shed my pants when I got the request to make some stuff for it and I'm definitely really happy that I've been able to get that chance but I just want to take this bit to I guess participate a bit in this discussion and give some suggestions and yeah some viewer suggestions in the meantime, because there are some really amazing people out there who don't get as many views or appreciation just in general uh, that I can just really recommend, especially if you don't really know about too many Planet Coaster um, stuff and you're looking into more stuff but you can't really find it. In any case, you can always follow me on Twitter, uh, shameless plug here. Uh, I usually retweet a lot of stuff that I find that people have made in the game that's really awesome. But there are also some really cool creators on YouTube or elsewhere that are definitely worth checking out if you're still looking for uh, some more aesthetics driven things like the things that I'm doing here. Big, very big inspiration for me has to be Kukamonda on his YouTube channel, but he's also on pretty much all other social media, I think. Um, his stuff is really amazing. You might know him of the Colosseum fame. He actually recently built an airship, an airship model after the in-game airship, just with all sorts of like um, objects, and actually put like an air balloon on top of it to make it like a blimp kind of steampunk airship, which is really amazing. So definitely go check his stuff out. There's also too many people to really shout out, uh, but like if you're still looking for suggestions. I can definitely recommend, uh, out of the top of my head, um, Adfo TV is really good, uh, Feed, the, Feed the Bear is really good as well, uh, Pieces of Prestige is pretty awesome, um, there's Rudy Rankamel who's also really cool, uh, he's actually built the stadium of the Europa, or, or of the um, European soccer thing that's going on at the moment that I don't follow because I'm Dutch, um, he's actually rebuilt the stadium that's been used for that which is absolutely amazing. And there are probably a couple of people that I forgot, but there are just many different things and many different channels that you can check out for more Planet Coaster stuff um, beside, you know, me as in general being aesthetics uh, driven. Uh, there's also a lot of awesome stuff on Reddit or on the Planet Coaster forums. Uh, definitely amazing stuff at Shy Guys World, who I also kind of want to shout out Jake C for his amazing roller coasters. He's not so much into scenery, but he makes some really cool realistic roller coasters. He's actually made an RMC uh, lately, which is really something that I didn't believe actually was possible, and it actually is really convincing as well. Um, so yeah, that's ja that's that for that plugging in general. I just figured I don't really find any other opportunity to plug these people that well, and this is probably the best opportunity that I have to do so. Because there's just a huge group of people out there who do what I do, basically, but don't get as much recognition for it and aren't the uh, Flabalikis or Conflict Nerds or Flux Trances or Sky Storms of this world. Um, so yeah, that is something that I kind of wanted to critique a bit. And also something that I do want to talk about a bit, especially because these buildings really suffer from this. 
one of the things that I also kind of picked up from the community creations video and that it's definitely something that I have to agree with as well is that as amazing as this game is at the moment and like there is no way to describe how happy I am with this game that wouldn't be well an understatement really because it's pretty much a game that I've been waiting for for 10 years if not 12 years damn Azkaban um, but um Actually, it's been nearly 12 years. Rollercoaster Kung 3 came out in 2004. Uh, but yeah, yeah, one of the things that is still something that I kind of can critique about this is that even though the game looks really amazing and you can build just about anything already with very limited pieces, something to keep in mind is that you're not so much uh, building buildings as you're just putting different objects together to make something that looks like a building, just to paraphrase N7 from Shanghai's World a bit. Because the problem with this is that you're just using many different objects to make something that, for instance, looks like it's um, a dome, but in reality it's just a bunch of wooden uh, odds and ends that are all just randomly put together to make this awesome shape. But in the end, you're left with just so many surfaces and parts of details that you don't actually see but are still there, which is most visible at the back of these buildings, which you might see flashing by in this uh, time-lapse now and then and it's one of the issues that make this game not just less friendly to users because you do have to go like great miles if you actually want to do something outside of the given themes even though it's possible it takes a lot of effort to put all the pieces together in certain ways to make it look convincing it's also just um, well completely terrible for any computer that you're playing on because the game is actually really well optimized already for especially the early alpha that it's in and I'm really surprised with how well it runs but it just eventually dies because you're using all of these different objects and you've got all these surfaces and uh, polygons that you don't actually see because they're in the middle of buildings but are actually being rendered by a computer which is one of the reasons why this park itself already has less than half the frame rate that I started it on and why Grizzly Valley lags so much despite not being that big. It's not so much a, a fault of the game itself, it definitely runs really well already, but it's kind of a limitation of the current building system. Like there are more or less ways to overcome the scenery limitations that we have at the moment because of the amazing building system, but I don't think it should be a, it should be a substitute for more content because at the moment it, it's more or less just a cheat but it kind of comes at a price as well. It doesn't make things much easier, nor for you or your PC. So that's something that I think is worth thinking about as well. And some people have claimed it's kind of like, um, you know, looking at the trailer, it's kind of like you're like a deception. Like people see things that aren't actually in the game. They're just kind of made through playing with what the game gives you really in, in a really smart way, I guess. But then again, I don't think that's quite a problem because in the end it is just a sandbox game and it's more or less what sandbox games have always been about. It's just that there is still a lot to do, especially in the content section. And even though it's really amazing what we can do with the building tools at the moment, uh, that shouldn't be a reason to be completely content with them. Um, and truth be told, if, it's, if there's anything the game developers can use better than praise, it's just constructive criticism. So I figured I would just throw that out there and maybe have some good discussions about it. Anyway, coming back to the main street itself, uh, I, I have a bit of catching up to do. Um, I wanted to get some chimneys in there. Somebody actually posted a comment about that and that was surprising because it was just one person. Um, but it's just something that I really needed to get in there since it's a very English thing, especially the English chimneys are pretty recognizable. And since the buildings aren't so industrial, I wanted to get some chimneys and some good old uh, smoke VFX in there just to make it a little bit more industrial than it was looking. And on the other hand, I wanted to have some of those planters and happy little trees just to make everything look a bit more inviting and alive since, you know, the buildings in general do use very gritty dark industrial colors. And this is a theme park after all, like this might be a steampunk theme, but it's also a steampunk theme within a theme park and that's something I want to consider as well. So I do want to keep it quite lively on the foliage and, you know, other decorative elements. And I just wanted to have a bit of foliage around this path. This path doesn't really lead anywhere, it's just to make this part of the park, because supposedly it's one part of a larger park, to make it look as if it 
could realistically be connected to another park. Anyway, that is just about it for the timelapse section, but I do still have a real-time section, so I'm gonna give it over to my real-time partner here. There are a couple of things I want to go over, because even though I will make like a final video to this series, I hope that answers a couple of questions that I've been getting, by the way. Um, I don't really talk in the final video, so it's not really a good um, spot to actually talk about some of the choices that I made. Um, and what works better than just doing it in real time and actually be able to show off the sort of main angles that I wanted to get done. Uh, the first and most important one for the main street, which only kind of works now that it's finished, is like the way that you arrive. There's this almost sort of symmetrical kind of feeling to it. It's almost like a Disney main street, except it's really small this time, but I didn't want to get um, some symmetrical-ish sort of element to this, though obviously the station itself is not symmetrical. Uh, neither are the buildings on um, the sides, but they do have a sort of symmetrical quality to them with similar heights and similar designs and both with like a tower on the corner and the station in the back. Um, though I have to say this path is not entirely straight to the station, which you can tell right here. Um, and it only kind of looks symmetrical as you approach it, but it actually isn't really straight or anything. Uh, what works really well as well, by the way, is the fact that if you just kind of walk into this area, you automatically see the coasters. So it's really quite like weenie that draws you toward seeing the coaster itself and the way that it sort of wraps itself around uh, this hill with all the scenery and stuff like that. And you might have noticed I added another path over here, which doesn't really serve any type of function. But the idea behind this area in general is that it... Uh, could be like a part of a park, so I won't finish this as in a real park It's just like one themed area. So say for instance um, Like the Arabian part of Disneyland or something like that and um, So I wanted to make sure I had like two entrances to be able to connect it to the hypothetical park Which it is supposedly part of and I figured this would be a really good main entrance as you really see the station from that direction and um this could be like a little side path from which you can enter the area as well, which actually works quite well because it's on the same side line of the, um, of the main two towers of the coaster as well as the station. So you do kind of have a really interesting view over here. Uh, the same goes for this area, like the path over here also lines up with the bridge and the towers in the background. And I don't really think I'll be doing much else because it's probably quite important to talk about what I want to do in the future. Because there's only one episode left, more or less, and it's going to be a quite messy episode. It's not really dedicated to anything in particular, just in general finishing up the um, things that still needed to be finished and touching up a few things that are not entirely good at the moment. Um, but I don't think I'll really work with this much anymore. Maybe a few details if I really feel like it, uh, but I actually want to keep this empty. I've gotten some good suggestions, actually. Um, one pretty recurring one was to try to get like a mine shaft in here maybe even do something with a conveyor belt in this area and while I feel it would be really interesting and definitely more um, cool to kind of fly over from the coasters perspective I don't think it would work that well if you look at like the ride in general because at the moment I'm pretty happy with how this is uh, sort of like one ring that's not so scenery heavy so you kind of um, still know what you need to look at. Like, if, if you were to look at the coaster at the moment, you still have the the main hill as a sort of main drawing point, and there's nothing over here to really distract you from it. I do uh, probably want to get some more heavy foliage or rock work or small scenery and details over there, uh, but there's nothing to really, like, make this one big um, just field of scenery everywhere and having too much detail to really notice anything and... Um, it's just something that I don't really want to have. So just to keep everything a bit more co a bit more coherent, I think I'll just leave scenery out over here to keep the focus on what's the most important and highest point of the ride itself. And over here, I figured it would be cool to have a little Queen and kind of 19th century mansion-ish restaurant. Um, it's not going to be too big, but just a nice restaurant so I can continue the sort of urban uh, line that you have on this side of the coaster. And I still want to do something with the brake run, though I'm not entirely sure what I can really do with it. Uh, something machinery-ish with gears and metal and all sorts of machinery stuff is basically what I'm looking into, even though I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to tackle that. And then obviously there is 
uh, the buildings, the backstage buildings for the main street that need to be done. And there's a little bit of foliage, but not that much actually. And I kind of want to keep the foliage a little bit distant and not have too much foliage in the ride itself. So this should be more or less how it's going to work out in the end. And yeah, just one more episode with a bit of touching stuff up and then it's probably time for oops, uh, a new thing. So thank you guys for watching this episode or part, I should say, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.